Hey everybody, I'm here today to talk to you about self-driving cars. In this video, I'll be talking about when we can expect self-driving cars to dominate the road and take up the majority of the cars on the road and sort of the implications of that happening and the technology that is needed in order for that to happen. So I'll be talking generally about self-driving cars, answering some common questions about them. Let's get right to it first and foremost, okay? How far away are we from having self-driving cars take up the majority of the road? I think that the majority of the cars on the road will be self-driving cars within 10 years. Now let me explain the thought process behind that. With each technology, with each new technology, there's a shorter time frame in which it takes uh, for the majority of consumers and users to actually adapt to that new technology. With electricity many, many years ago, it took about 50 years for the majority of households to start implementing electricity in their houses. Move on to cell phones, it took about 10 years for cell phones to be used and, and implemented by the majority of consumers. Smartphones next, five years for smartphones, for the majority of people to start using smartphones on a regular basis. So with that being said, 50 years, 10 years, five years, that means that as soon as the first hint of a self-driving car appears on the road and it works properly and the technology is where it needs to be, the, 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 the time frame for the majority of cars to be self-driving cars will be like that. It will be ridiculously fast, okay? As soon as we start seeing it, for to get from one to two, two to four, four to eight will be extremely quickly and then to go into the majority of cars on the road will be super fast. Now the one factor that will work against that is the fact that a self-driving car is way more expensive than a cell phone or a smartphone. And with that being said, that might hold it back slightly, but I still think that within 10 years, the majority of cars on the road will be self-driving cars, okay? Next up on the list, what are the implications of self-driving cars? Well, fewer accidents, most definitely, because although nothing is perfect and computers still have errors, computer error is a, a much smaller chance. There's a much smaller chance for computer error than there is for human error. And with that being said, self-driving cars will almost certainly get into way fewer accidents than cars that are driven by humans. So there will be fewer accidents. And with that being said, your insurance will change because how is insurance going to charge you a premium based on your driving skills and yourself as a driver when you're not even driving the car? So I think that insurance will be based on the car itself and how expensive the car is to replace and the level of technology, of self-driving technology that the car offers, okay? Obviously a more expensive car will mean a more expensive insurance premium, but if that more expensive car comes with a higher level of self-driving technology then maybe it will bring the premium down again okay so it, it'll be a little bit complicated as far as I can understand but that's my best guess as to what will happen with regards to the implication of fewer accidents and the implication on insurance the next implication auto repair fewer accidents means fewer repairs are needed both with regards to body work and engine work mechanical work so with that being said there will be less body repair and mechanical repair being needed for cars how However, there will be an opening in a new industry for people that can work on these self-driving cars, both on the mechanical aspect of them and also on the technological aspect of them. So there will be a huge new industry being opened, being opened up for a new type of job, for a new type of skill, okay? Those are the implications. Also, there's one more on the side, commute time. If you have cars that have a much slight, a much smaller chance of being in an accident and it's not based on human error, I mean, when they take a turn, they're gonna take it at the appropriate speed. When they have to brake, they'll brake on time and so forth, you can travel at a much higher speed. Because that means if you're going in a straight line, you can travel at, let's say, 70 kilometers an hour, and then you have a turn the car knows to go down to 50 kilometers an hour and will not oversteer, will not understeer, will not spin out, will read the road conditions and so forth. So with all of that being said, you will likely be able to travel at a much higher speed and that's because there's there's no chance of human error it's all based on computer uh, technological understanding of the road conditions and speed and the chance of error the mistake chance is so so extremely 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 small so with that being said there's another implication as well cars interior if you think about the car's interior, right? Right now you have a steering wheel, you have a speedometer, you have a tachometer, you have a shift lever and so forth, okay? 
in my opinion, a car's interior will show you some information. You'll have some sort of gauge cluster, a digital gauge cluster for the information on with regards to uh, your estimated time of arrival, uh, what speed it, you're traveling at and so forth, but it will be more luxurious and it will allow for a lot more room. I mean, if you wanna take out your laptop and type as your car brings you from where you are to where you wanna be, you can do that. If you wanna make a business phone call, you can do that because you're not driving the car. So the implication of the car's interior will be huge cars will be completely completely redesigned absolutely redesigned so those are all of the implications those are uh, the time frames in which previous technologies have taken to actually get into households and consumers and, and the customers and so forth and I think that as soon as we see a self-driving car on the road it's gonna pick up like crazy now also what technology is needed to have a self-driving car well, in my opinion, there are only a few technologies that are needed, but they have to be almost flawless, as close to flawless as possible, okay? The chance for error has to be unbelievably small. Number one, you need a GPS technology that can read the roads and is updated on an hourly or a daily basis because if they're doing construction somewhere, you don't want your car driving you into a construction site or into a ditch or into a hole. It needs to be updated immediately and even in advance, meaning if they can update it when they know that construction will happen, that will be even better, but it needs to be updated maybe even by the minute, literally very, very, very frequently, okay? You also need some sort of lane keeping technology that will keep you in a lane that will read future road conditions. Meaning if you are driving on a dry road right now and you're about to hit a puddle, it needs to read that. The computer and the cameras need to read that. So you need a lane keeping technology. You need a road condition type of reading technology as well. You also need uh, perfected auto acceleration and auto braking. So meaning the computer or the technology has to be able to read how much to accelerate, how to do it smoothly, because if you're being driven around, you want it to be smooth. It also needs to read when to brake. If a car happens to cut you off for whatever reason, uh, it needs to know to hammer on the brakes or to slam the brakes. And the car behind you then needs to know to slam on the brakes as well. So there are a lot of technologies that are needed. And the thing is that all of these technologies need to be perfect because if self-driving cars take over the roads and the technology is only at 99%, which is, believe it or not, far from perfect, then what's gonna happen is there will be a lot of accidents and a lot of bad things will happen. So the technology needs to be nearly flawless. It needs to be flawless on paper, so that when they, uh, during calculations, and then if an error happens, then they need to deal with that error and fix it ASAP. That is my idea of self-driving cars, driverless cars, if you will. And that's what I, uh, sort of how soon I think they'll actually uh, appear on the roads. And I think it'll take about 10 years for the majority of cars to be self-driving cars. But I think the first one or two or five or 10 will be here before you know it. I would say within five years. And that's basically it. I really am excited to see this technology take effect. I know it's happening. It's going to be an amazing thing. I believe it's going to truly change the way we look at our time and we value our time. Even if you're sitting in traffic, if you're able to do something else that's important to you, it's going to totally change the value that we associate with time, driving, and our daily, weekly, and weekend commutes. And that's basically it. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel for more car videos like this one and that's all i have for you today thanks for watching